So I've now had the PS5 a month, and in this video, I'm discussing my thoughts, my review of the PlayStation having had it for a month. Now, before I launch into um, the actual performance and different games and, and my thoughts on that, I just want to discuss the aesthetics. So three things on this. Firstly, in terms of what it looks like, I have to say I'm a little bit indifferent to what the PlayStation 5 looks like. Um, to be fair, I could say that about all of them. It doesn't really uh, matter to me. I probably like the PlayStation 1 the best, but maybe that's nostalgia, who knows. Um, but it, it, it looks all right. I'm, I'm sure you can form your own opinion just by looking um, pictures on it. Um, but when it actually turned up in terms of the size, I was surprised how big the PlayStation 5 actually is. Uh, you are definitely going to notice it wherever you put it in the room. It is considerably bigger than the uh, PS4 that I had before. Um, so like I say, it's, it's not going to be missed. Um, the final thing I want to say in aesthetics, and, and this is just something I've, I've picked up on, is actually when you when you want to swap games, if you've got this version, you want to swap games, the disc, if you lay the PlayStation 5 down, which is how I've got it on my shelf, and you haven't got it on a high up shelf, but you've got low down, which I imagine probably quite a lot of people would do, when you want to change the disc, it is actually a bit hard to see the disc, so you press the eject button on top of it, but then you kind of have to crouch down and look underneath it to find where the disc is, or at least I do. Um, so it's a bit weird, it's kind of hidden, so I don't know, maybe people just feel around and keep pushing until it goes in. Uh, but for me, it's, it's it seems a bit weird. I mean, that's kind of a minor thing, but it's uh, I just thought that was a slightly weird uh, design point. Now, in terms of the actual performance of the PlayStation 5, now I have four games on the PlayStation. I'm going to quickly uh, run through each of those and what I think about performance, what it means to the, the PlayStation 5. Um, so first off then um, is... I'm, I'm going to talk about the, the game that I'd say if you have bought PlayStation, if you've got one come in or you haven't got to it yet, you, you have to play Astro's Playroom. Not necessarily because it's the best game ever. I do, as a side point, think it's a very, very good game, but it is a short game. Um, but you should play it because it really does showcase, I mean, there's lots to talk about this, but it's very true that it really does showcase the abilities of, in particular, the control of the PlayStation 5. And it is... You know, it is interesting to see all these different things you can do with it because, you know, in all the other games I've played, they don't touch on most of these features. So it's kind of nice knowing what's out there. So like I say, Star of Astro's Play Moon is a very fun game. Um, it, the, the graphics are good as well. It's, you know, a bit more on the cartoony side, so it's always easier to make those games look a little bit better. Um, but it is, it is a good game. It's well worth playing, and it's sort of game that people of any age can play as well. And it's a good game just to show people, give them the control, let them have a feel if they come around to see it. So like I said, overall big thumbs up for Astro's Playroom. Um, so the next game I want to talk about then is um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Now, for me, um, this, you know, I, I played, um, I've played probably all of the Assassin's Creed games. I played all the, um, the ones set in Florence and more recently the Odyssey and the Origins one. I particularly liked... Um, origins and um odyssey i liked going to ancient egypt ancient greece um they're interesting to points in history so like i said it's very interesting in this game as the name suggests you are going back uh, a thousand years uh, to the time of the vikings which again is an interesting point in history um in terms of what do i think about the game so far i mean um i think that the graphics are good do they necessarily feel that much different from the already good graphics of Odyssey or Orig Origins? I would say probably not. Um, to me, it feels a bit like a PlayStation 4 game that has been ported over to the PlayStation 5. That's not to say the graphics aren't good. They are really, really good. Um, but, you know, the, I'm going to go on to the next game, which I think has better uh, graphics and showcases the PlayStation 5 a lot more. Um, again, for me, probably just because I've played loads of Assassin's Creed and I'll probably play the next one, I think... Um, it's not necessarily offered anything too different, which is maybe what I just wanted on the PS5. So I think a little bit, um, you know, I'm potentially parking Assassin's Creed a little bit and I'll probably come back to it a bit later. Like I say, I might come back and say it's the best game ever. Um, but, but right now it, I've got other games which I'm primarily looking at for the reasons I'm going to go on to. I mean, the other thing I would say is I am from the United Kingdom and this game is saying United Kingdom. And though it looks very nice, it's not that exciting for me 
going around forests and stuff like that because I can see it in my own country. So maybe that's a specific point why it's not maybe gripping my attention as much as other games like Ancient Egypt, Ancient Greece, where, you know, I, I found those uh, pieces of scenery rather fascinating. Like I say, that may be a personal thing. So the next game that I wanted to talk about then, and this is a very interesting one, is, is Demon Souls. Now, I mentioned that the next game was going to be one that had excellent graphics, and I really think this game, you know, it, it's a step up from anything I've played on the PlayStation 4. Obviously, this is a remaster of an old game, but it's been built from the ground up, and it, it really, really does look um, fantastic. And if you haven't played Demon Souls, um, and if you're thinking about getting in, I actually got it with the PlayStation because when I, you know, you you get five seconds to go on, pick a bundle, and try and buy it at least at the moment um, because they're so hard to get hold of. So I quickly went on the Demon Souls one without thinking too much about it. I'd kind of thought to myself that I was going to get a pack with that if the option was there, but like I said, I didn't buy it. You know, thinking too much about it, but I think there's there's a bit of a you know it's notoriously a hard game which I knew going into it, and I think. The hardness of the game still surprised me. It is a particularly tricky game to play. And I'm sure it's true that some people pick up a game, think that the graphics are absolutely amazing, play it, not be able to get through the first bit, and then kind of just never play it again. Um, and and the, the point that's interesting about that for people who may be thinking that when they start playing it is you kind of feel when you very first play that you are doing the same bit over and over and over again. You're getting kills, you're not getting anywhere. And I think the thing that I didn't perhaps realise right at the beginning is actually you are having an impact on the world. If you get to a certain point, you can do things, give yourself um, a shortcut. You are not going literally back to where you started. And I'd also say there's lots of good videos out there on YouTube. If you watch one or two of those, give you a few tips, it can make the game a lot better. So, you know, now I'm getting a lot further through the game. I've killed quite a few of the, um, the rather large demons. And like I say, you have, you have to get into a bit of a rhythm. So if you can get past that sort of initial difficulty the inertia of getting right into that game um then it is is more than worth it like i say you can put it on you can watch the introduction it's, it's fantastic graphics you know the, the demons uh, they, they all look absolutely brilliant and then you just have to really get into it understand what you're doing and then the game really really does get going and it's it's really as they say because it's so difficult it's a really rewarding experience if you get there so like i say that's the game that i'm playing at the moment uh, and is very very good now when i i'd say if i made this video a few weeks ago when i was just two weeks after having the ps5 i probably would have been in a bit of a, a strange situation where i thought myself right i've got this this game system is it's fantastic. Yeah, I've got Assassin's Creed, which I'm not at the moment that into, which like I say could change. And I've got Demon's Souls, which I'm feeling I'm getting nowhere for. So I can't afford self, do I have the right mix of games to begin with? And then I had Astro's Playroom, but I completed that because like I say it's a relatively short game. Whereas like I say now having having stuck with Demon's Souls a little bit longer that I've really realised uh, yeah. it's a good game and it's sort of opened things up for me. Plus, I have bought one more game. Now, just before moving on to that one game, I'd say um, the, the other interesting thing about Assassin's Creed, and maybe it's just uh, my expectation here, but one of the big things they've talked about for the PS5 is the lack of loading screens. Now, um, it slightly surprised me to, to me is for Demon's Souls, it doesn't feel like you have any real loading screens. It's all very, very quick. Whereas in Assassin's Creed, which again makes me feel like um, it, perhaps it's you know, a PS4 game that's been ported over, they are much, much quicker, the loading screens, than they were before. But you still have them. You still have the bit where you sort of run around in a misty area. I don't know, you know if you play the games, you know what I'm talking about. And rather than being there for what felt like ever in the PS4, it is considerably shorter. But the fact it's even still there, I, I find a bit surprising. So like I say, it makes me feel a bit more like a ported over. Now, I mentioned I've got one more game. Now, this is a completely different change of play, pace from those games. So the other game I've got is Roller Coaster Tycoon, which, like I say, kind of a bit left field. Um, I played uh, Theme Park before, and that was really, really good. So I thought, well, this is natural progression from that game. I'm sure that game probably isn't the first that's probably on your shopping list if you're buying a PS5 or you already have one. However, I quite enjoy it because you've got the, the real... Um, sort of seriousness and difficulty of Demon Souls, and if you want to play a bit of that, and then move over to Roller Coaster Tycoon, it's it's a completely different experience. It's much more relaxed. It's not that difficult. It's fun. The graphics are fun. Again, it's cartoony, so most cartoony games look good. Now, maybe I'm trying to play it wrong. Uh, I mean, if I was gonna say one downside is I don't feel that the controls are maybe as intuitive as some of uh, the other similar games to that. So I play quite a lot of other games like Planet Full. 
I'd even throw Empire of Sin, it's a similar type of game, then there's Two Point Hospital, all those types of games, I think the controls are very, very intuitive, maybe they're not as intuitive here, but I guess the game is trying, with its mechanic around building roller coasters, trying to be a, a bit more complex, so maybe that's why, maybe I just haven't really got used to it, again, if, you, if I made this video in a month's time, I might say that this is a great game, the controls are really, really um, intuitive. So putting my my experiences together of those four games, I mean, it's clear that the PS5 is incredibly powerful. We already know that. Um, but I think it really tell, tells you that the future is going to be obviously very bright for it. It's got, you know, I'm quite excited to see some of the upcoming games, how they are. There's plenty coming out this year. Um, and in 2022, even more, um, Hogwarts Legacy is a game I'm particularly interested in about you'll know that if you are a subscriber or if you've seen some videos on this channel because we talk about Hogwarts Legacy a lot if that's of interest to you you might want to check out some of our videos and subscribe if you've got this far through the video it'd be great if you hit the like button and I'll see you on the next video